الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اشهد ان حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له جل عن الشبيه والنظير والكفء والمثيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى رضوانه صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وإخوانه وخلانه ومن سار على نهجه والتفى أثره واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم تنزيله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما يا مسلمز after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the almighty the magnificent the most glorious the most merciful we invoke his blessings to descend upon the noblest of his creation Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family members his companions his wives and upon every believing man and woman until the end of times. 
As to what follows, dear Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs us in the Holy Quran to be conscious of him when he says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, others who claim to believe, ittaqullah. Be fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Haqqa tuqati, as he deserves. Wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon, and ensure, O believers, that you do not die in any state, except in the state of submission, in the state of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a life upon Islam and an ending upon Iman. Dear Muslims, picture yourself sitting in your comfort zone and your phone rings. And when you pick up your phone, you realize it's one of your best, most sincere, most truthful friends calling. It has been approximately one year when it was last you spoke to him. He was the individual that you grew up with. He was the most sincere of friends to you. After him, maybe you even struggled to get friends like him. And hesitantly, you pick up the phone and he says to you, my beloved brother, I am visiting your area in a week's time and I would love us to meet up. Out of excitement and joy, you would be thinking on how best to host the best of your friends. The noblest of them all, maybe the most righteous of them all. And you try and make your utmost preparation for his comfort. So that when he comes, you don't fall short. He doesn't catch you in surprise. You make sure that you deliver your best to him because he deserves that. The Muslims similarly. There's even a more noble guest that is knocking on our door. And that is the sacred month of Ramadan. Just as you would prepare for a special guest, Ramadan needs even more preparation. More so when it comes to the month of Ramadan. And if a believer fails to prepare for such noble, sacred, sanctified moments, then he's preparing himself to fail. In today's khutbah, insha'Allah, we will discuss extremely crucial points that must be upheld for the month of Ramadan, before the month of Ramadan. What preparations should you and I make for the month of Ramadan, before the month of Ramadan? Hopefully, I can cover this in seven crucial points. Point number one. And I slightly touched on this last week. One of the ways to approach the month of Ramadan and the best of ways is through invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through supplications and dua. Mu'alla ibn al-Fadl, one of the righteous predecessors, he would say, the previous generation intending the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Mu'alla ibn al-Fadl is narrating to us how the companions would take Ramadan to be. How would they go about the month of Ramadan? How did they perceive the month of Ramadan to be? He says, كانوا يعني الصحابة يدعون الله سبحانه وتعالى ستة أشهر أن يبلغهم رمضان ثم يدعونه بعد ذلك لما بقي من الشهور أن يتقبل منهم He says that the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم we understood from their lives, we saw it, we experienced this when they were amongst us and may Allah be pleased with them. He says that they would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala six months before Ramadan to allow them to reach the following Ramadan. And after the month of Ramadan would elapse, they would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the next five months remaining in the year that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their Ramadan from them. Yahya ibn Kathir. Another pious predecessor, he says, Kana min du'aihim. The pious predecessors would make this dua. Allahumma sallimna ila Ramadan. وَسَلِّمْ إِلَيْنَا رَمَضَانِ وَتَسَلَّمْهُ مِنَّا مُتَقَبَّلًا O oh Allah, deliver us safely to the month of Ramadan and hand over the month of Ramadan to us in safety, in a sound state, in a state of well-being, without any harm, without any prior afflictions. وَتَسَلَّمْهُ مِنَّا مُتَقَبَّلًا And after blessing us with this noble guest with the month of Ramadan, O oh Allah, accept it from us. Accept it from us and forgive and overlook our shortcomings. The attitude of a believer is to hold on to du'as before the month of Ramadan. 
You and I have no idea if we would be able to meet the month of Ramadan or not. Today, we might be alive. Tomorrow, we might be dead. Speaking about dying, we even have a janazah today. The janazah was extremely desirous. The deceased wished that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would allow him or her to meet the month of Ramadan. But their life cut them short. The decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala superseded every decree. And that's the reality of life. Hence, from the life of the companions, we understand that we should engage in dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to meet this noble month. And not only to meet it, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also grants you and I the tawfiq to make the most of it. Point number two. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to reach the month of Ramadan, and may Allah make it happen for all of us, we should embrace the month of Ramadan with a sense of gratitude. Imam al nawi may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him, when he discusses on how to welcome the month of Ramadan, he says, the first thing that should come on your lips, the first thing that should take over your heart is a sense of gratitude when you meet the month of Ramadan. Because it is the greatest bounty the living creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can experience. It's the biggest bounty, favor, and boon of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the living. And that is why the pious predecessors would say, if the dead were given an opportunity to come back to this world and to desire one moment, they would have desired that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows them to experience just one more night of Laylatul Qadr and that's it. Because, because now after moving on, after passing away, after being placed in the grave, after having witnessed the unseen, what was unseen to them in this world and now they can see it with their own eyes. They have realized how important the month of Ramadan is. They have realized the deeds that they did in Laylatul Qadr meant everything for them. And that's all what a dead desires. So when the month of Ramadan comes in, you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is a promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the absolute promises narrated in the Holy Quran, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear to everyone. لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ If you will be grateful. لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ I will increase you. Maybe that state of gratitude, that sentiment of appreciation that came out from your tongue, that one statement of Alhamdulillah that you said, might get to you 10 more years of Ramadan or even more. لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you are grateful, then I will increase you. I will increase you in everything. This is a promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاللَّهُ لَا يُخْلِفُ الْمِعَادِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never, never leaves His promises unfulfilled. Number three, we understand from the ahadith, the traditions and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that a believer should always be excited of such seasons. Seasons of ibadah, seasons of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seasons where you isolate yourself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The entire year, dear Muslims, we feed our bodies. We feed our physical aspects. And the spirit, the soul, the ruh suffers. It's suffocating. The month of Ramadan, the seasons of ibadah, the seasons of worship, mawasim al khayrat, as seasons in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the soul, the spirit, a chance to nourish itself, to flourish, to survive, to thrive. And that's why it's extremely important for you to be excited when you hear the commencement of such a noble month. When you hear such a noble month is close. Unfortunately, that might not necessarily be the case with Muslims today. We feel saddened. We feel that it's a burden. That is one of the consequences of the lives that we have chosen, chosen to live, as we will discuss further. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would incentivize the Sahaba whenever the month of Ramadan would close, and he would say to them, جَاءَكُمْ شَهْرٌ مُبَارَكٌ شَهْرُ رَمَضَانٌ إِفْتَرَضَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ صِيَامَهُ فِيهِ تُفَتَّحُ أَبْوَابُ الْجِنَانِ وَتُغَلَّقُ أَبْوَابُ النِّيرَانِ وَتُصَفَّدُ الشَّيَاطِينِ فِيهِ لَيْلَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٍ فَمَنْ حُرِمَ خَيْرَهَا فَقَدْ حُرِمَ الْخَيْرَ كُلَّهُ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say to the companions, dear companions, there is a noble month knocking at your door. There is a noble month close. 
to approaching us. It's a blessed month, blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obligated you to fast the entire month. In this month, the gates of Jannah are left open. This symbolizes the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to emphasize on how extensive the mercy of Allah, how present the mercy of Allah is in that particular month, it's ever present. But more so during the month of Ramadan, the Prophet ﷺ says, not only the gates of Jannah are left open, the gates of Jahannam are shut. And the shayateen are chained down. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, in it is a night equivalent to a thousand months of worship. One night of ibadah equivalent to a thousand months. 83 odd years. Man hurima khayraha faqad hurima al khayra kulla. Whosoever will be deprived of its goodness, then that is deprivation in essence. Being a loser is not losing your materialistic desires. It's not losing on the apartment, on the fancy house that you aspired for for 40 years of your life. It's not losing on the car that you always dreamt of. It's not losing on the woman that you always wanted to get married to. You feel a sense of loss. You feel a sense of deprivation at the loss of such things. But the Prophet says, deprivation in essence, true deprivation is when one is deprived of the goodness of Laylatul Qadr. What a loser. What a humiliation. So the Prophet would excite the companions to look forward to this month. And they would look forward to this month. Point number four. One of the most important things that you should equip yourself with from now, that you should place from now, if you haven't until now, is to have a sincere intention, a firm resolve, a determination to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A sincere intention to do what? That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you with the month of Ramadan, I will make the most of it. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows me to reach the month of Ramadan, I will abandon my vices, my evil habits. I will get rid of my addictions. I will change and correct myself. I will try and rehabilitate myself. I will make the most of this golden opportunity that has been handed over to me by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When someone gives you a gift, when someone gives you a blessing, and you abuse it, it's an offense and it's an insult to the person who gifted you this. How about if the creator of all creators, if the king of all kings, if the lord of the universes grants you a gift and you misuse and abuse it? It's the greatest form of offense and ingratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to place that sincere intention, that firm resolve within ourselves. That this Ramadan, bi-idhnillah, it will be a game changer. فَلَوْ صَدَقُوا اللَّهَ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ and dear Muslim brother and sister, be truthful in your intention. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the veracity, the honesty, the sincerity of our intentions and be truthful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَوْ صَدَقُوا اللَّهَ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ Had they been true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that would have been good for them. إِن تَصْدُقِ اللَّهَ يَصْدُقْ If you will be honest, if you will be truthful, if you will be true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will make it happen for you. We all have problems. We all have sins. We all have devils in our closet. We all have addictions that we are obsessed with. We suffer to win off these addictions. How about if you place that intention that bi this Ramadan will be the end of it. And you are honest in that. Wallahi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it happen to you. I take an oath at this position during this blessed moment that it will happen for you. As long as you're truthful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَوْ صَدَقُوا اللَّهَ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ And why is it important to have intentions? Why is it extremely crucial? Because our lives are not guaranteed. We have no idea when we will pass away. It can be now, it can be the next moment, it can be tomorrow, it can be hours before Ramadan sets in. Life is not guaranteed. No one knows when his end time will come. And that being the case, you want to have your intention in place because if you pass away before the month of Ramadan and you had that sincere intention, this intention will take the place of your actions. 
will assume the responsibility of your actions. It's an explicit hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He says, "Inna Allah katab al hasanat wa sayyat." Then he explained that Allah subhanahu wa taala clarified to you and I what is good, what is bad. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned to the companions some goods, some bads. فَمَنْ هَمَّ بِحَسَنَةٍ Then he said to them, Whosoever intends to do a good deed, فَلَمْ يَعْلَمْهَا فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهَا He intends to do a good deed, but he wasn't. He wasn't granted the opportunity to fulfill that good deed. But he had the intention. كَتَبَهَا اللَّهُ لَهُ عِنْدَهُ حَسَنَةً كَامِلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write it for him in full, as if he did the good deed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant it to him. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, which is part of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa taala and His clemency upon us. He said, "Whosoever intends to do a bad deed, فلم يعملها, but he didn't do it. Allah subhanahu wa taala will not write it as a bad deed; rather, He will write it a good deed because he didn't do it. And Allah. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says. In one of the most famous ahadith, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئِمْ مَا نَوَى Everyone will be rewarded based on what they intended. This is the power of our religion. This is the blessing of Islam, of our deen. Even before you take action, just with your intention, you can earn so many rewards. So placing that intention is extremely crucial. No one is guaranteed when they will die. كم كنت تعرف ممن صام في سلف من بين أهل وجيران وخلان أفناهم الموت واستبقاك بعدهم حيا فما أقرب القاصي من الداني قطب عمر بن عبد العزيز رضي الله تعالى عنه فقال عمر بن عبد العزيز on one occasion he addressed his people and he said إنكم لن تخلقوا عبثا ولن تتركوا سدى dear brothers and sisters dear listeners you have not been created purposeless you have not been created in vain, nor have you been left in this dunya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without a purpose. وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ مَعَادًا يَنْزِلُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ لِلْفَصْلِ بَيْنَ عِبَادِهِ You have an appointment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where He will descend. He will descend and He will put you to account. And He will judge among His servants. فَخَابَ وَخَسِرْ Umar bin Abdul Aziz continues and he says, فَخَابَ وَخَسِرَ مَنْ خَرَجَ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ الَّتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ The greatest loser on that day, the day of judgment, the greatest loser, the one who has been truly humiliated, the one who has been disgraced, is the one who will lose out on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His mercy that has encompassed everything. وَحُرِمَ جَنَّةً عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ And he has lost out on Jannah, the width of which is equivalent to the heavens and the earth. He says, Do you not see that you are destined to be amongst those people who will be perished? Your wealth will be inherited by your inheritors. And the inheritors will also leave it behind and they will go back to the best of inheritors. Every morning, every evening, you send one of your colleagues, one of your partners, one of your friends, one of your loved ones, one of your relatives, one of your parents, one of your grandparents, you send them to the grave. You send them back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَدْ قَذَى نَحْبَهُ His term has ended. فَتُوَدِّعُونَهُ You bid farewell to him. وَتَدَعُونَهُ فِي صَدْعٍ مِّنَ الْأَرْضِ غَيْرَ مُوَسَّدٍ وَلَا مُمَهَّدٍ And you hand him over to a crevice of the earth which is not paved, it has not been softened, it has not been aligned, you hand him over to his grave. It has ended for him. He has left his worldly pursuits and belongings behind. He left his beloved ones. And now the mud will be his eternal. The mud will be his eternal abode. And accountability awaits for him. He doesn't care anymore what he left behind. He doesn't care of the millions and the billions that he left behind. Fakiran ila ma aslaf. He's desperate for the good deeds that he did. Fattakullaha ibad Allah. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz says, Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be conscious of him. Correct your ways. Turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qabla nuzul al-maut. 
وانقضاء مواقيته before death strikes فيا مغرورا بطول الامل oh one who has been deluded by his prolonged desires and hopes مسرورا بسوء عمله rejoicing and obsessed with his evil كن من الموت على وجل فانك لا تدري متى يهجم الاجل beware of death for when it strikes it strikes suddenly so death is not something that we should be in doubt of unfortunately it's the most certain thing but we deal with it as if it's the most doubtful of matters have that intention in place number 5 knowing that death and life life is not guaranteed and death is most certain for everyone before you approach the month of ramadan meet it with repentance Proceed the month of Ramadan with a sincere repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Repentance in every moment, in every time is an obligation upon every Muslim. But more so during the month of Ramadan. Why so dear Muslims? Because if there is anything that will hold you back from being able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if there is anything that will shackle you, that will pull you down, that will make you lazy and lethargic, from attaining the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from drawing closer to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's our sins Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala speaking about the consequences and the ill fates of sins he says al-dhunubu tahtiku al-isam sins come with humiliation wa tubaddilu al-ni'am it changes the course of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's bounties wa tunzilu al-niqam it brings about calamities afflictions you're suffering from a calamity Something has been taken away from you. Look no further. Make no mistake in looking any further. Revert back and say to yourself, possibly this has been taken away from me because of the sins that I have committed against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of my acts of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَتَحْبِسُ الدُّعَاءَ وَتَقْطَعُ الرَّجَاءَ And one of the worst consequences of sins is that it makes a person despondent of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It takes away your positive attitude, your positive thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taken away. And more worse, it makes dua goes unanswered. It makes your dua, our duas be unanswered. You're making a dua month in, month out. For years, the dua is not being answered. Maybe because it is of sins. Someone came to Hassan al-Basri and he said to him, لا نستطيع قيام الليل I am struggling to wake up in the last portion of the night. He said to him, أنت رجل قد قيدتك ذنوبك You're a man who has been held back by his sins. Repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will open the gates for you. وقال الفضيل إذا كنت لا تستطيع قيام الليل ولا صيام النهار فاعلم أنك محبوس قد قيدتك ذنوبك If you're not able to draw yourself to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you're not able to come to the masjid to offer your prayers, if, you're not come, if you cannot come for Jum'ah on time as required by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you're a person who has been held back by his sins. And dear Muslims, sins not only, not only draws you back from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only draws you away from the obedience and the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and even if you manage to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we realize that the sweetness of that ibadah is taken away. Wal'iyadhu billah. The psyche that you have to be motivated has been taken away. You read the Quran, the eyes don't flow. The verses of the Quran are recited. It doesn't make you affected in any way. You're not affected in any way. You stand for salah, and your mind is wandering all over the place. This is because of sins. The pleasure of ibadat is taken away because of the consequences of sins. So we have to make a sincere repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before the month of Ramadan so that the ill fates, the consequences, the implications of our sins don't hold us back from making the most of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's worship and making the most of this particular month. Number six, dear Muslims, dear brothers and sisters, it is important before the month of Ramadan to explore the virtues of the month of Ramadan in order to be motivated, to understand the jurisprudence behind the month of Ramadan, the rulings and the etiquettes of fasting. So many people might be fasting 
and the fasts mean nothing. And the fasts go unaccepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're fasting but because of not meeting the conditions or because of violating the conditions of fasting, the fasts are invalid while they think that they have fasted the whole month. While others fast the month of Ramadan when they should not be fasting. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted them that concession and they fall into a sin because at times you can fast and you're sinful because you're causing more harm and damage to yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want you to kill yourself. It's important for you to understand the rulings pertaining to the month of Ramadan. Fasting. Those people who are exempted from fasting. Those people who are not exempted from fasting. Those people who will not fast. What are they supposed to be doing? It's extremely important to understand this. Go to your local imam, your local masjid. If there is any halaqa, any circle, any lessons pertaining to this, then make sure that you're part of it and you understand it fully. The last point that I will end my khutbah with. Number seven, planning, strategizing, and setting yourself goals. Make sure that you have your objectives and your goals set out. Clear to yourself. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. We plan for everything. When we travel, we have an elaborate itinerary. When we engage in our worldly interactions, in our worldly dealings, we have an elaborate strategy for the whole year. We strategize, we plan, we place budgets, we have financial gains and losses for everything. How about when it comes to the month of Ramadan, the best of months? You have to strategize. Make sure that you have set your goals. How much of Quran do you want to recite? How much will I recite every day? When will I recite it? Is it attainable? Is it not attainable? Is it realistic? Is it not realistic? And make sure that all your goals are time bound. There is a time to it that you have to meet. If you're self-employed, take a break in the month of Ramadan and it's the best break that you'll give yourself. If you are employed, Maybe you should take your yearly annual vacation in this month so that you can make the most of it. Because we all know, working, juggling with, with, with taraweeh, qiyamul layl, then waking up in the last portion of the night, then again going to work, it's very difficult. It's burdening, it's tiring, it's exhausting. If you have the opportunity, say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every year, I have taken my annual leave to take a vacation, to go here, to go there. This year, bi idhnillah, just for your sake, I am taking a vacation in order to isolate myself in the worship. This is the best vacation that you will give yourself. The best spiritual retreat that you will give yourself. To isolate yourself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Extremely important. As I end, an extremely crucial point that I would love to mention. As you set your goals, this is what I want you to do. With every goal that you place, have a smaller backup goal. So for example, you say, I will recite two juzu every day hypothetically, or one juz every day. Have a smaller backup goal. Maybe one juz. That's my backup goal. Why? That way on the days that you're tired, you're busy, and those days will come. You, you wake up on a particular day, you're not motivated. It's the month of Ramadan, you're not motivated. That's part of being human. It's part of you being a human. Very, very possible. It happens to us. It happens to the most righteous of people. It happens to the companions. On such days, when you cannot attain your primary goal, at least you can go back to your backup goal and lean on it. You can go back to your smaller goal rather than doing nothing at all. And what will this save you from? It will save you from a relapse. From you saying to yourself that if I cannot attain my goal, so what's the point? So so be it. Let me just leave it all together. No, 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 no. You will save yourself from this slump. Hunt a goal. Whatever the goal is, make it realistic. Specify it measurable and attainable, time-bound, and set a backup goal with every primary goal so that you can fall back on it on the days you're not able to achieve your primary goal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to meet the month of Ramadan with energy and enthusiasm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to meet the month of Ramadan in a state of well-being, in a state of sound health. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant shifa and cure to all those who are sick and ailing and those who desire to meet the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them health, grant us health, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to make the most of it and accept, for, accept it from us after we complete the entire month of Ramadan. أقول ما تسمعون واستغفر الله الجليل العظيم لي ولكم من كل ذنب وخطية فاستغفروا
الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن ولا أما بعد هذا فصل وسلم على من أمركم ربكم بالصلاة والسلام عليه فقال مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز أهل غزة يا ذا الجلال والعزة اللهم ارحم بعضهم واجبر كسرهم وتول أمرهم وأمن خائفهم اللهم كن لهم وليا ونصيرا ومؤيدا وظهيرا اللهم احفظهم بما تحفظ به عبادك الصالحين يا من لا تضيع عنده الودائع نستودعك أهلنا المستضعفين في غزة اللهم أنجهم اللهم أنجهم اللهم أنجهم اللهم هيئ لهم نصرا من عندك وفرجا منك عاجلا غير آجل اللهم عليك بأعدائهم أعداء الإسلام اللهم عليك بالصهاينة المحتلين الغاصبين الضالين اللهم عليك بهم فإنهم لا يعجزونك اللهم أرنا فيهم عجائب قدرتك اللهم أرنا فيهم عجائب قدرتك اللهم أرسل عليهم طيرا أبابيل ترميهم بحجارة من سجيل فجعلهم كعصف مأكول ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم سلمنا إلى رمضان وسلم إلينا رمضان وتسلمه منا متقبلا ربنا لا تزق لبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين We will be having